Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss all the type C questions and its solution of the chapter string manipulation from class 11. Now write a program to count the number of time a character occurs in the given string. So first of all we have to take a string and we will take a character and we will count how many times that particular character occurs in the string. So we can either use a for loop or else we can directly use a count function. So here I have used a count function over here. You can see first of all we have to accept the string and the character. The string is stored in a variable list here and character in ch. Now we will use a count function that is str plus count which will take the ch or the character as its uh, parameter then it will count how many times that particular character is present in the string and it will be stored in a variable count now we will print the number of times ch occurs in str is count you can see here in the print statement whatever you will write within double quotes that will appear as a string and if you want to access the value of any variable then you have to just keep it like this without using any codes so once you run the program it will ask you to enter a string let's say the string entered is python program and the character to be searched is p then it will print the number of times p occurs in python program is 2. And also we can do the same program by using a for loop. Here you have to accept a string. Uh, let's store it in a variable str. And the character entered has to be stored in a variable ch. And count is a variable which will store how many times the character occurs in the string, which is initialized with 0. Then with the help of a for loop, we'll iterate through all the characters present in the string. So for i in str, that means i will iterate through all the characters. And if i equal to equal to ch, i same as the character, then count value will be incremented by 1. Then you have to print the number of times the character occurs in string is count. So if you do like this also, you can uh, like get the same output. Now write a program which replaces all vowels in the string with star. So it has to read a string and whatever vowels present in the string, it will replace them with a star. So here we will use a replace function. But before that, we will check all the characters one by one. So that we will do with the help of a for loop. Then within for loop, we have to give a if condition. That means it will check whether that particular character is a vowel or not. If it is a vowel, then it has to be replaced with a star. So this is what we have to do. First of all, take a string and store it in a variable, let's say str. Then we will take another variable vowel, which is a string containing all the vowel characters. That is a, e, i, o, u. Now with the help of a for loop, we hear for c in str. That means c represents, refers to each character that will iterate through all the characters of the string str. If c in vowel, so here we are using also in. So in is used to check whether there is this character is present uh, like any of the characters between a, e, i, o, u. Then it has to be replaced. So str will be str dot replace. Within replace function, you have to take two parameters. First one, what character has to be replaced and then by what character it has to be replaced. So C has to be replaced with star. So these two things you have to specify. Then the result will be stored again in the same string str. Then you have to print the new string is str. So if you run this, let's say the string entered is Python program. Then the new string will be um, here. You can see all the vowel characters are replaced by star. Now write a program to reverse a string and store the reversed string in another string. So you can see, let's say the first string that has to be entered by the user, it will be stored in a variable, let's say str. Then another variable re we have to create, which will store the reversed string, which is initialized with an empty string. And uh, then you have to take a for loop. So for C in str, C will iterate through all the characters of the string str. 
RFV is equal to C plus RFV. So here what you are doing, you are appending each character in the beginning of the string RFV. So initially RFV was like empty string, nothing was there. So for C in STR, so it will check all the characters one by one. So the first character which will be checked, that will be appended. So in the first iteration, let's say the string entered is Python. Then in the first iteration, the first character P will be added with the empty string REV. So in the first iteration, your REV will be P only. P plus that is an empty string. The next iteration, the next character that is Y, Y will be appended before P. So it will become YP in the next iteration. In the third iteration, the next character that is T, that will be appended before Y. So your string will become TYP. So like this, it will continue at the end of for loop, you will get the final reverse string, which is stored in the variable REV. So this is how you can, if you run the program, you will get the output like this. Now write a program that prompts a phone number of 10 digits and two dashes with dashes after the area code and after next three digits. Now display if the phone number entered is a valid number in valid format or not. So you can see here. Uh, so first of all, you have to enter a phone number that has to be stored in a variable, let's say S, that has to be uh, stored as a string. Now, we will first of all check the length of the string, whether it is 12 or not, because it is having 10 digits and two dashes. So its length should be 12, that's the first condition. If it is 12, then we will check the inner condition. So here there is a nested if. So the outer if states the length should be 12. If it is 12, then it will check the inner condition like this. There should be dashes at index number three and seven. That means let's say area code is uh, after three digits, uh, three digits the area codes. So the first dash is after first three digit, and the next dash is after next three digits. That means the dashes will be at index number three and seven. Now the rest of the places will be occupied with digits. So you can use uh, string slicing over here. So S within square bracket column three. That means so all these characters starting from index number zero till three, excluding index number three. That is index number zero, one, and two should be digit and s within square bracket 8 to 12 that means the characters present at index number 8 9 10 and 11 that means the last four characters should be digit then if all these kind of conditions are satisfied then it will print it is a valid number in valid format otherwise it will print it is an invalid format then the last else refers to the first if that is the outer if it will print it is an invalid number if the length is not equal to 12. Okay, now let's run this program. Now, once you run the program, you can see for in a first run, let's say the entered number is like this 93476892. So, this is actually not a 12 digit, uh, it's not actually the whole uh, length is not 12. So, it will print that it's an invalid number. Then, the second run, let's say the number entered is 95346780021. So the, here there are 12, uh, the length is 12, total 12 characters are there, but it is like uh, not in a proper format. Dashes are not given in proper position. So in a third run, let's say you have entered the number in this format. Here you can see the area code is having three digits, then a dash, then next three digits, then another dash and the rest four digits. So here it will print it's a valid number in valid format. Now write a program that prompts the user for a string. Then extract all the digits from the string. And if there are digits, then sum the collected digits together. Then print out the original string, the digits, and the sum of the digits. If there are no digits, then print the original string and message that it has no digit. Now let's. Now first of all, we have to input a string. Then we will check whether there is any digit present in the string or not. If it is there, then we have to find out the sum of the digits. Okay, so for that, we have to take a variable sum, which is initialized with zero. So uh, with the help of for loop, we will check all the characters one by one in the string. And if the character is a digit, then it has to be added in the sum. 
and uh, if it is not a digit then it will be left as it is so finally at the end of the for loop your sum value will be a non zero quantity if there is some digit in a string otherwise it will be zero as it is so you can just give a condition if your sum value is zero after the completion of the for loop then that means there is no digit in the string the string has no digit otherwise it has to print the digits present in the string and the sum of the digits okay so first of all uh, we have to just after taking the uh, string as input and storing it in a variable let's say s we will just print that the original string is s because anyhow you have to print the original string whether it's having a digit or not uh, so that statement you can just write before the loops now we will initialize the variable sum with zero now also we want to store the digits what are the digits present in the string then we will store that in a let's say string variable that is d so which is initialized with an empty string that indicates that d is a string type of variable and that means we are going to store some string or append some string in that variable now for ch in s that means this is a for loop where ch will iterate through all the characters in s if ch dot is digit that means that is a digit if this condition will give you a true value then sum will be sum plus ch here ch will be converted into integer in the numeric value because we cannot do arithmetic operation with the character variable so we have to convert the character into its equivalent numeric value by using a int function so that character will be treated as integer now now we'll find out sum of that particular number so sum is equal to sum plus uh, that character which is converted into integer now d plus equal to ch that means d is equal to d plus ch d will store that particular uh, digit which is that particular character which is a digit that will be appended in the variable d so finally at the end of the loop your d will contain all the numbers which are pre present in the string in a form of a string actually so at the end of the loop you will check whether sum is zero or not if it is a zero then it has to print the string has no digit otherwise if the sum is having some non zero values then you can print the digits in the string are d and the sum of the digits is sum okay so once you run the program you can see this is first run then here you have entered a string let's say python 5 program 4 so this is a string having two digits 5 and 4 so first of all it will print the original string is python 5 program 4 as we have just mentioned the beginning of the program that will be printed then it will go to the else part because there are some digits so obviously the sum value will be not zero so it will execute the else part and will print the digits in the string are 5 4 here 5 4 will be stored uh, as stored in a variable d and it's displayed in a form of a string only now the sum of these digits is 9 that is displayed over here now if you run the program once again and here it will pass a string which is not having any digit let's say python program this is not having any digit at all then it will just print the original string is python program and string has no digits because at the end of the for loop your sum value will be zero so it will print the string has no digits write a program that prompts user to write some sentences followed by enter now it should print the original sentence with the following statistics first it has to print the number of words present in the string then the number of characters including space and punctuation then the percentage of alphanumeric characters how many alphanumeric characters are there and its percentage it has to find out so first of all we have to take a string um, for which we have to find out all the statistics which are given in the question so we have to take a string and store it in a variable let's say s then to know the characters present number of characters including all the white space punctuation everything you can just use the length function len function by len function you can find out the length of the string so within the len function you can just uh, just pass the string variable which is s then it will give you the number of characters present in the string and let's say it is stored in a variable cars c h a r s okay 
now we have to find out the number of words present in the stream so there is a function called split split function is there which will split the stream uh, whenever it will find a white space and it will return you the words present in the uh, stream and it will uh, return the words in a form of a list but here we will use a for loop we will not use the split function so we'll use a for loop the loop will execute like this for ch in s that means it will check each character one by one in this uh, string s then if ch equal to equal to space that means wherever it will find a space then it will increase the words value by one so words will be words plus one words is initialized with one what's the variable which is initialized with one so uh, it will do that one so what will happen wherever it will find a space it will increase the word value by one so let's uh, consider your string is having two words and these two words are separated with a, a space then whenever it will find a space it will increase the words value by one that means the words will become one plus one two we have initialized words with one because if there will be no space then that means there is only one word is present over there in the string We'll consider that then else l if we have used l if condition ch is alum that means alum is a function which will return true if the character is either alphabet or a number so we have to check how many alpha numeric characters are present in the string so you can use the function is alum if ch is is alum then alum variable will be increased by one alum is a variable which is used to store the number of alphanumeric characters and that is initialized with zero okay so at the end of the for loop we can find out the number of words present in the string and the number of alphanumeric characters present in the string now we have to find out the percentage of alphanumeric characters for that you have to just take uh, you have to use this formula the number of alphanumeric characters divided by total number of characters into 100 so alpha numeric numeric characters are stored in variable alum and the total number of characters are stored in a variable cars so into 100 you have to do that now finally you can print the number of words or words and number of characters cars and the number of alpha numeric characters are alum the percentage of alpha numeric character is that alum underscore percent and here i have also used a round function so that uh the value will be at, uh, like rounded up to two digits after the decimal point so you can use any other digit also so once you run the program let's say the entire string is like this the three big diseases are anger comma ego comma jealousy then semicolon then keep yourself aloof from these three diseases like this so here this string contains some uh, like characters as you know uh, like alphabets uh, are there then numbers are also there apart from that some other characters like uh, white spaces comma semicolon all these things are there so finally it will print the number of words are 16 and number of characters are 87 and number of alphanumeric characters are 69 the percentage of alpha numerics are 69 by 87 into 100 which is coming as 79.31 so this is the percentage of alpha numeric characters now write a program as following specification repeatedly prompt for a sentence and queue for quit upon input a sentence printed by converting lower case to upper case and vice versa now other characters will be left unchanged now let's do this program now the question is the user has to input strings as long as he wants until he presses q to quit so for that we have to take a while loop so while loop is taking one argument that is true so you can directly pass true within a while loop so that while loop will start executing that means basically it takes a condition when the condition gives you the true value then while loop will execute Uh, but here since there is no condition you can directly pass a true so that while loop will start executing and within that we have to give a condition to come out of the loop or to, uh, to stop the execution of the loop 
So within while loop, we have taken a variable s which will store the string entered by the user. So first of all, it will ask the user to enter a string and the entered string is stored in a variable s. Now we will check for all the characters in the string s whether they are in lowercase or uppercase. If it is in lowercase, it has to be converted into uppercase. If it is uppercase, then it has to be converted into lowercase. So we, ha we have to use a for loop. So for ch in s, ch is a variable which will iterate through all the characters present in the string s. Now first condition is if ch is, that is lower, that means the character is in lowercase then it has to print that character by converting it into uppercase. So you are using the function upper which will convert the character into uppercase. So ch dot upper will convert the character which is in lowercase into uppercase. Now we have to write it in a sequence. So we have to use the end statement. Uh, otherwise all the characters will come in different different lines. So it has to come in a single line. So you have to give an end statement. Then else if the character that is upper, that means ch dot is upper will give you the true value if the character is in uppercase. Then it has to print that particular character in lowercase by using the function dot lower, ch dot lower. Now again, use the end statement because we want all the characters to appear in the same line. Then else it has to print the character as it is. If it is neither in uppercase or lowercase, then it has to print that character as it is. Then after doing all this, you have to take on the variable, let's say ans, which will store the value which is entered by the user. The user has to enter any character like q to quit or c to continue. So it will give a message, print a message like this type q to quit and c to continue and print this message by giving a next line statement so that this will appear at uh, the next line otherwise it will appear in the same line where the string is there so after uh, printing this value the user has to press either c or q if the user presses c that means a n s answer value is c then the loop will continue just give a continue statement otherwise if the uh, answer is Q, that means user enters a very character is Q to quit, then it has to quit. So break, that means control will come out of the loop, the loop execution will stop over there. If the user will press C, then the same uh, while loop will continue. Again, the user has to enter another string and all these operations will uh, take place. Now, once you run the program, so it has to, it will ask the user to enter a string. Let's say the user enters Python program. You can see P's are there in uppercase. All of the characters are in lowercase. Then it will uh, print like this Python program where the cases are inverted. Now it will print the message type Q to quit and C to continue. Let's say user enters C, then the while loop will again continue. So it will again enter, ask to enter a string. And let's say the string entered is class 11 CBAC. Like this, you can see some uh, characters are in uppercase and some are in lowercase. Then it will print like this, just converting the cases. Again, it will print the message type Q to quit and C to continue. And if the user presses Q, then it will quit over there. That means the execution will stop. It will not again ask for any other string to enter. Now write a program that does the following task. That is taking two inputs, integer and string. From string, extract all the digits in order. If no digits set extracted digit to zero, then add the integer input and digits extracted from the string together as an integer. Okay. Now print a string of the form integer input plus string digits equal to sum. Okay. So first of all, you have to give one integer value, then one more string value. And if the string is containing some uh, digits, some numbers, then the, those have to be extracted in its order. Then those have that particular uh, number has to be added with the input uh, integer input. Then you can find the sum. Okay, now let's do this. So first of all, the user has to enter a number which is stored in a variable num. And the second thing, the user has to enter a string also, which is stored in a variable, let's say s. Now, after that, uh, we will check all the characters in the string, whether it is containing any number or not. 
if it contains any number then we have to extract that so those have to be extracted and stored in a string variable let's say d we will initialize d with a zero and zero is there in a form of a string and the other digits the rest of the digits which are there in the string those will be uh, appended with this d okay so with, with the help of a for loop we'll check all the characters present in the string s so for ch in s ch will iterate through all the characters if ch dot is digit that means if the character is a digit if this is returning true then d plus equal to ch d is equal to d plus ch then that character will be appended with d okay so at the end of this for loop what will happen if the string containing any digits those will be appended with d okay and uh, just remember d is having one initial value which is zero that is in a form of a string so suppose your string is containing two integers 3 and 5 then first three will be appended with zero then five will be appended then finally your d value will be 0 3 5 like this then else that means the for loop will complete its execution after that what will happen digits will be int of d you will just convert the digit which is in a string form will just convert it into integer form so what will happen if your string is containing any digit let's say the string is having digits 3 and 5 then these two will be collected in order and it will be stored in a string variable d so d will have value 0 3 5 then that will be converted into integer in the else part so your digits will contain the value 35 but if in case your string does not contain any digit then your digits will have int of d which is nothing but 0 that's it then after that you have to calculate sum sum as sum is equal to num plus digits okay now i can just print sum is num plus digits that equal to sum so in a first run let's say the number entered is 10 and the string is let's say class 11 chapter 5 you can see the numbers which are present the digits which are present in this string are 1 1 and 5 so these three are collected in order so it is forming a number 115 so 115 will be added with the entered number 10 and giving you the value 125 let's say in the second run you have the entered first number is 0 and the string is python program and here the string is not having any digits in it so your sum will be 10 plus 0 that is 10 now on what principle does python compare two strings write a program that takes two strings from the user and display the smallest string in a single line and the largest string in this format that means the first letter then second letter third letter will come like this then uh, the last letter will be uh, in the right side like forming a v shape basically so we'll first of all uh, discuss the first part of the question that is on what principle does python compare two strings this is done by uh, comparing the ascii value of the characters present in the string for example if you compare python and program these are the two strings then first of all the first two characters will be compared p and p will be compared and these two are same then we'll go to the next character y and r so y is compared to r and y is greater than r why because y has a greater ascii value than r okay so in that case it will stop comparing over there and you'll find out that python is greater than program got it so if you just write python is greater than program or not then you'll get the result as true uh, this is how your uh, strings are compared in python so to know the ascii value of a particular character you can use the function ord uh, within ord if you pass the particular character then you'll get the ascii value of that or unicode value of that character like ord of a is 97 small a is 97 capital a is 65 like this it is there so it will just compare the ascii value of the corresponding character so wherever it will find that uh, one character ascii value is greater than the another then that particular, particular string will be greater 
so it doesn't compare according to the length or what so this is the principle how this uh, there are two strings which are compared but here in this question it is asking to write the smaller string the program that takes two strings from user display the smallest string in a single line and largest in this format so here we will just find out which is the smaller means then lengthwise which is small and in lengthwise which is large in that case you have to use the length function to compare the length of the strings otherwise if you just compare the strings then it will find out in this way it will find out which is greater which is smaller okay. now we'll just check this now there is just a small example i've given to just explain you how these strings are compared you can see there are two strings let's say s1 having value python and string s2 is having value program you can see if you just compare these two strings directly if s1 is greater than s2 then s1 is greater so greater is a variable which is assigned with the variable s1 and um, else greater is equal to s2 okay so uh, you have to print which is the greater string at the same time we will compare the length of the strings so if alien of s1 alien function will give you the length of the string that means the number of characters present in the string if length of s1 is greater than length of s2 then s1 is the longer string longer is s1 else longer is s2 just to print the longer string so once you run the program program you can see the output is like this the greatest string is python and the longest string is program you can see even though python is having less number of characters but it is greater from program if you just compare the two strings directly because this is how uh, strings are compared in python but if you want to compare them lengthwise then you have to use length function so which is having long length more length then uh, it will give you the longest string is program okay now we'll proceed uh, to the next part of the program now we will see how to print a string in a v shape so while printing the string in v shape there are two cases one first case is if uh, there are even number of characters in the string that means the string length is a even number the second case is a string length is an odd number so we'll consider both the cases now let's uh, consider this first case here you can see the string python is written like this in v shape so first of all what you have to do you have to just imagine a matrix like this where the number of columns is same as the length of the string and the number of rows is same as the half of the length of the string so here in in this case you can see for the string python the uh, length is 6 so the columns are 6 there are 6 columns and each character will be written in each column but in separate rows and the number of rows are 3 which is 6 divided by 2 okay so here you can see the rows are numbered indexed like this i uh, equal to 0 that represents the first row and i value is 1 represents the second row and i equal to 2 represents the third row and in each row you can see the letters are arranged in this fashion so first of all there are some spaces before the character and there are some spaces after the character then then finally one more character so like this the first character p is there but before p there are no spaces just consider the first row so first row there are zero spaces then the character to be printed is s of 0 the character which is present at zero index number of the string s so that is p now we have to print four spaces in between next the last character which is present at index number 5 okay now the next row you can see the spaces is equal to 1 which is same as the value of i and it will print the character at index number 1 s of 1 that is y now number of spaces is 2 and it will print string of 4 the character which is present at index number 4 in a third row where i value is 2 it will print two spaces and the character at index number 2 now the number of spaces becomes 0 now it will print the character which is present at index number 3 like this it will be printed now if you just consider all the cases you can just uh, uh, give a generalized formula like this your i will arrange 
as the number of row i will range from 0 to 2 in this case okay because there are three rows so i will have value 0 1 and 2 so within that loop it has to print how many spaces for the first row when i value is 0 it has to print 0 spaces then in the, the character which is at index number 0 so s of i then spaces will be column minus 2 into i plus 1 you can see column value is 6 which is nothing but the length of the string minus 2 into i plus 1 i value is 0 for the first row so 0 plus 1 is 1 and 1 into 2 is 2 so 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. So in the first row it has to print 4 spaces. Then it has to print the last character which is indexed like this. Column minus i minus 1. So column value is 6. 6 minus i is 6 minus 0 that is 6 minus 1 that is 5. So like this it will print the character which is at index number 5. So this is the generalized uh, formula I can use. You can just write this print statement within the for loop. The same thing when i will have value 1, then it will print i number of spaces that is 1 space. Then uh, character which is present at index number 1 that is y. Then the spaces will be column minus 2 into i plus 1 that is i value is 1. So i plus 1 is 2. So 2 into 2 is 4. So column minus 4 that is 6 minus 4 that is 2. So it will print two spaces over there. Then finally it will print uh, the character which is present at index number 4. Like this you can get your strings arranged in a V shape. Okay fine this much is clear. Now the same thing you have to do for the second case where the number of uh, string number of characters are odd. That means the string length is an odd number. So there you have to draw the same thing same V shape. Only thing is that the middle uh, character will be left behind. That is the thing. The middle character has to be printed in the last row. Okay. So you have to just do the same thing. You have to consider a matrix which uh, whose length is same as the length of the string. So here consider the string program which is having seven characters. So the length of this string is seven. So we'll consider a matrix having length, uh, column number seven. And row will be column by 2. Here you have to do floor division. So column floor division 2 will give you the value as 3. 7 by 2 is 3. So it will have 3 rows. You can see just you did in the previous program. Same thing. Number of rows will be 3 over here. Now the same thing you can see. The number of spaces in the first row is 0. And it will print the character at 0 position. Then number of spaces will be 5. Which is nothing but column minus 2 into i plus 1 same thing and it will print the last character which is present at index number 6 that is s of column minus i minus 1 the same formula will continue for the first three rows only thing is that we have to add a last digit last character sorry middle character in the last row okay and before that some number of spaces are there you can see G is the middlemost character over here and before G there are three number of spaces and this three is the same as your value of row. How many number of rows are there that will be the number of spaces in the last row. So you can see there are three spaces and the character also present at that particular index number which is same as your row value. Okay that means S of 3. So you can just use this formula for i in range row. Same thing that you did in the previous case. You have to print all the spaces and characters. Then finally after the loop, once the loop gets uh, over, then you have to print some number of spaces. Spaces will be same as the number row and value row and the character also which is present at index number value row. That means the value of row is 3. So it will print three spaces and the character which is present at index number three. So that will be the middlemost character of your string. So this is how you have to do. Now we have to implement this in the program. Now first of all uh, it will ask the user to enter a string and it will store it in a variable let's say s. Now column is uh, you have to take the length of s whatever is the length of the string that will be the number of columns. 
then row value will be column flow division 2 whatever is the length of the string that will be divided by 2 and the flow division value quotient value will be stored in a variable row that many number of rows and that many number of columns are there in your matrix now if column percent is to equal to equal to 0 that means the string is of um, even numbered length okay that means the length of the string is a even number that is the first case then you have to just print for i in range row you have to print i number of spaces then s of i then column minus 2 into i plus 1 number of spaces then s of column minus i minus 1 that's the last character so like this you have to print okay this is how you have to this is how your uh, string will be printed in a v shape if the string length is an even number now the second condition l if column percent is to equal to equal to 1 that means the length of the string is an odd number then uh, your loop will execute like this for i in range row whatever the same thing you have to write then at the end of the loop you have to just print how many spaces the spaces into row whatever is the row value that is that many number of spaces will be printed then s of row so uh, the character which is present at that particular index number that will be printed so like that you will get your uh, string like this in this form now the program is like this first of all you have to enter two strings and the smallest string has to be printed in a line and the longest string has to be printed in v say that's the question so first of all we have to take the two strings in two variables s1 and s2 now if length of s1 is greater than length of s2 then there are two variables let's say ls and ss ls for the long string and ss for the small string okay so l is equal to s1 and ss is equal to s2 this is the assignment you can you are just assigning s1 to ls and s2 to ss but here this is done in a single line so this is how you can assign the variables uh, the values to different variables in a single line so here the values will be uh, associated in order of the variables so s1 will be assigned to ls and s2 will be assigned to ss else that means if length of s1 is less than length of s2 then ls is s2 and ss is s1 so with the help of this if conditional statement you'll find out which string is the longer and which is the shorter so shortest string will be stored in ss and the longest string will be stored in ls so it has to print the shortest string is ss that will be printed then it has to print the longest string is then you have to use the for loop to print the longest string in a v shape so as we did in a previous program we have to take uh, the column value will be same as the length of the string ls then row is equal to column divided by 2 converted into integer that is the row value so if your column percent is to equal to equal to 0 that means even number of uh, characters present in the string the string length is an even number then it has to print it has to use this particular for loop to print the characters in a v set that we have already discussed in a previous program else if column percent is to equal to equal to one that means the number of or the string length is odd number then it has to print the characters in v set just we discussed previously in this way now we'll run the program let's say enter string first string you have entered is python the second string that you entered is program then it will first display the shortest string the shortest string is python and the longest string is program which is displayed in this way now write a program to convert a number into its equivalent roman numeral and store its value as a string so as you know in roman numeral there are different characters uh, which are representing different numbers so the unique uh, characters which are there uh, in roman numeral the, those are like i iv b ix x like this i represents 1 iv is for 4 b is uh, representing 5 ix is for 9 and x is for 10 like this so on currently m is for 1000 so we will consider this much only 
so here you can see all other numbers are formed from all these characters. Like if three is there, then you have to write three eyes like this. So how we can convert one number into a Roman numeral? So you have to consider these steps. So first of all, we have to check. We have to just consider this list. First of all, this list has to be there with us. Then we have to check in the list of the decimals, which is just smaller than or equal to the number. Okay, that means the number which you want to convert, let's say it is 973. And we have to find out the equivalent Roman numeral of 973. Then we have to check in the list which number which is just smaller than this number. So 973. Then uh, the number which is just smaller than this one is 900. Okay, so that's that is basically the base decimal. Now we have to divide this 973 with this base decimal value that is 900. Okay, so 973 divided by 900 and get the cosine. So here the cosine is 1. So whatever is the value of cosine, we have to write the Roman equivalent of 900 that many number of times, the cosine number of times. So here cosine is 1 and the Roman numeral of 900 is CM. So CM has to be written one time. Okay. That's it. Now the number 973 is now converted into 973 percent 900. That means it has to be divided by 900. Whatever remainder is there, your next number is that much. You have to consider 73 now. So 973 percent 900 is 73. Now 73 is your number. Now again repeat the same process. So what is the value which is just less than 73 in the list? Then you can find that value is 50. 50 is just less than 73 in the list. So we will just uh, divide uh, 50 with 73. And you have to do the floor division always remember. And with floor division, whatever quotient you will get that many number of times you have to write the ro equivalent Roman numeral of 50. So equivalent Roman numeral of 50 is L. L has to be written one time. Why? Because 73 by 50, the quotient is 1. Okay. Now append this L with your earlier value CM. CM L. So we'll go to the program part, how to do it. But just now you just understand how to convert it into Roman numeral. Now your number becomes 73% 50. 73 divided by 50 and remainder that you get, that is 23. So next number is your 23. Now check in the list which number is just smaller than 23. That is 10. Okay. Uh, now we have to divide 23 with 10 to get the quotient. If you divide 23 with 10, it will get the quotient as 2. So you have to write the Roman equivalent of 10 two times. That is x is Roman equivalent of 10. Uh, that you have to print two times. That is xx. Okay. Now your number will become 23% 10. 23% 10 is giving you the value as 3. Then check in the list which is the next value, base value for 3. The number which is just smaller than 3 that is 1 over here. Now the equivalent of 1 is i. Now divide 3 with 1 and get the quotient. The quotient is 3. That means i has to be written 3 times. So just type i three times and finally if you just uh, add them append them together then you can see c m l x x i i i that is the roman equivalent of 973 now we will implement this thing in our program first of all we have to write the algorithm for this one then we'll implement it in the program so first see the algorithm of this one so first of all, we have to create a list of decimals. So just I've shown you the list in a previous um, part. So the list name is let's say DEC, which is storing the decimals in descending order. You have to keep it in descending order. And another list of let's say ROM to store the Roman equivalent. Uh, that is also has to be stored in a descending order. So first of all, we have to keep these two lists with us. Now we have to store the number for which we want to find out the Roman uh, equivalent. We will store that number in a variable let's say num. Now we will create a for loop which will iterate through the length of the list DEC. Let i iterate through the length of list DEC. 
and divide num with each item of the list starting with 1900 and so on that means if your number is 973 then it uh, has to be divided with all the values present in the list dec the values which are present in the list dec are 1900 like this so all these things will be divided with the number in a loop okay so if your number is 973 and it is divided by 1000 then your first quotient value will be zero like this but uh, when it will just find its base decimal value that means the number which is just less than the number that means if the number is 973 then its base decimal will be 900 then that is in that case it will produce a non zero quotient okay so store the corresponding roman numeral of the base value q number of times in a string s okay so wherever it will find a non a zero quotient value then that many number of times that means q number of times you have to print the roman equivalent of the base decimal and store it in a variable string s okay now the number becomes num percent base decimal divide the base decimal with the number and whatever remainder you are getting the store it in a variable num now do the same process repeat the same process and whatever roman numeral you will get then go on appending it with the string result is resulting string that is s then finally at the end of your loops you'll find out the roman equivalent of the number now let's implement this in the program now we'll do this program like this first of all we have to take two list first of all the first list is d c which is storing the base decimal values like 1900 500 like this in descending order and rom is a list which will store the corresponding roman numerals also in descending order like this now num is a variable which will store the number which is entered by the user and s is a string which is initialized with an empty string which will store the roman equivalent of the number now in a for loop i will range from 0 to length of dec length, uh, list dec so i will have possible values from 0 to 12 that many times what will happen q is equal to num flow division dec of i dec of i is when i value is 0 then dec of i is 1000 so num flow division 1000 so whatever quotient is there that will be stored in a variable q now your n will be q into rom of i that means whatever value is present in the roman equivalent of that position i that means first case uh, that is m so m will be printed quotient number of times and that is stored in a variable n now s is equal to s plus n so that roman equivalent will be appended in the string s now your number will become num percentage dec of i whatever remainder is there when you divide it with that one then that value will become your number for next iteration now like this we'll find out the roman numeral now once you run the program let's say the number entered is 324 then its roman numeral is cccxxiv now this is the execution step how you are converting 324 you can see this is how your for loop executes now for loop uh, your i ranges from 0 to 12 length of dc is 30 uh, 12 so uh, 0 will have well sorry 13 so i will have value 0 to 12 so when i is having value 0 then q will have value 324 flow division 1000 that is 0 and n will be one empty string and s is also with that empty string and num will be 324% 1000 that will give you the same value as 324 the same thing will continue till your i becomes 4 when i will be 4 then q will be 324 flow division 100 because 100 is the value which is present at the index number 4 uh, and uh, that is uh, the uh, base decimal for the number 324 Okay, so 100 is divided by 324 will give you the quotient as 3, and the Roman numeral of uh, equivalent of 100 is C. So C will be printed three times. So n will have value C C C. 
and ACE will be appended with this value. So ACE will also have value CCC. And your num becomes 324% 100, that is 24. Okay, the next iteration when I value is 5, 24 will be divided with 90, will give you the result as 0. The same thing will continue for next two iterations. Now, when your I value will become uh, 8, then that case 24 will be divided by 10 and giving you the quotient as 2. So, X will be printed 2 times because uh, X is the equivalent of 10. So, that will be printed 2 times and stored in a variable N. And that will be appended with S and S will have value C, C, C and X, X. Okay. Now, your num will become 24% is 10, that is 4. Okay. Now, for next two iterations, 4% 4 9, 4, 4 division 9 and 4 division 5 will give you 0 value. But the next iteration when 4 will be divided by 4, it will give you the quotient as 1. So, IV will be printed one time and your num will become 4% 4 is 4 as 0. Okay. Now, next iteration also, it will give you the value as 0. And final is value is CCCXXIV. That is the Roman equivalent of the number 324. Now, write a program that asks the user for a string and returns how many words are there in the string. Now, you have to count the number of spaces. Now, the same program you can do by using the split function. But here, we have to use a for loop to count the number of spaces. So, we have to take a string in a variable s and space is a variable which is initialized with 0. And it will check each character one by one. If the character is equal to a space, then space value will be incremented by 1. So, finally, at the end of the loop, we will find out the number of spaces present in the string. The number of words will be spaces plus 1. Okay. So, enter a string. Let's say the string entered is like this. Try to conduct yourself in such a way as not to injure others. So, here you can find out there are 12 number of spaces. And the number of words will be 12 plus 1, that is 13. Now, write a program to input a formula and check if it has the uh, same number of opening and closing parentheses or not. So, this is a simple program. First of all, you have to enter a formula and let's store it in a variable, let's say f. And we will take two variables, let's say open underscore p to store the number of open parentheses and close underscore p to store the number of close parentheses and both of them are initialized with 0. Now, we'll check uh, each character in the formula and we'll find how many open parentheses are there and how many closed parentheses are there. And finally, we'll compare whether they are same or not. So, if ch equal to equal to open parenthesis, then open p will be incremented by 1. Else, if ch equal to equal to close parenthesis, then close parenthesis will be incremented by 1. And finally, at the end of the loop, you'll find out how many number of open parenthesis and close parenthesis are there. Then you have to compare them. If open p equal to equal to close p, then you have to print the formula is correct. Otherwise, it has to print the formula is incorrect. Now, we'll run the program. Let's say in our first run, we have entered the formula like this. First one parenthesis, opening parenthesis, then A plus, open parenthesis, B plus C, then close parenthesis, into D, then close parenthesis. So, here you can see there are two open and two close parenthesis. So, it will print that it's the correct formula. Now, we'll just uh, do another run. And here we have not given the same number of opening and closing parenthesis. So, here it is printing. The formula is incorrect. Now, write a program to enter a line of text and count the number of vowels in it. Now, this is also a very simple program. First of all, you have to enter a line of text and store it in a variable s. Then the number of vowels you have to count and let's just store it in a variable v, which is initialized with a 0. Now, we'll check each and every character in the string and if the character is in any of the characters of A, E, I, O, U. So, we have taken A, E, I, O, U in a string. So, CH will be checked whether CH is present in any of these characters or not. If it is, then V will be incremented by 1. Then it has to print the number of vowels of V. So, at the end of the loop, we'll find out how many number of vowels are there present in the line of text. Let's say the line is like this, be simple, be sincere, then you can see the number of vowels present in this line are 7. Now write a program to input a line of text and print the biggest word lengthwise. 
that means the longest rod actually present in the line okay so first of all you have to take the line of text in a variable let's say s and here we have used a split function to split uh, the like different uh, the string into different words so wherever it will find a white space it will split over there so it will store them in a list called words so words is a list which is containing the words present in the sentence or line s okay in the string s now we have to print now just if you want to see what are the words present in the string then you can just use a print statement to print the words so you can see once you run the program let's say the entire line is this one then it has just separated all the words from the string and it has kept in a variable words words is nothing but a list of words so you can see these are the words present in the string now we have to find which is the longest word now let's take a variable longest which is initialized with an empty string now with the help of a for loop for w in words w will iterate through all the words of the least words okay if length of w is greater than length of longest then longest will be assigned with the value of w okay so once this loop will execute now first execution the first word is half so half is having length more than the length of longest because longest was empty string so its length will be like zero so longest will be assigned with the value half in the first iteration so in the second iteration what will happen the second word is constructive then constructive length is more than the length of the word half which is present in the variable longest then now your longest will be assigned with this value which is constructive okay so like this will continue at the end of the for loop will find the longest word which is present in the uh, list of the words will be stored in a variable longest then it has to print the longest word is longest then you can see once you run the program you will find out the longest word now write a program to input a line of text and create a new line of text where each word is reversed okay so we have to first of all take a string and store it in a variable s now here we will use a split function where the string will be splitted wherever it will find a space so in that way the words will be collected and will it will be stored in a list variable let's say the variable name is words so words is nothing but a list containing the words which are present in the string okay now we will create another variable new this is a string variable which is initialized with one empty string to store your new string where each word will be reversed now we will reverse each word through the for loop so for w in words now w will iterate through all the words present in the list words rev equal to one empty string rev is a string which will store the reverse of each and every word now we'll check for all the characters present in this word w for c in w this is a inner for loop where the characters also will be checked in the word now for c in w rev equal to c plus rev so every time each character is checked that will be concatenated in the beginning of the string rev so rev was an empty string the first character of w that will be appended before rev the second character will be before that one so like this you will get a reversed word so you have just done this type of program in the beginning uh, some question was there where you have, you have reversed a string so you have to use the same uh, like uh, loop over here so at the end of the loop you will get the reverse of that particular word so you have to append that word in your new string so new is equal to new plus rev so within that you can also uh, add one more space so that the words will be separated by one one space so new is equal to new concatenated with a space and again concatenated concatenated with the uh, string rev okay now finally you, you can print the new string is new like this so once you run the program let's say the entire string is like this discipline is the mark of intelligent living then you can see each 
<coughs> what is reversed in this string now we can do the same uh, thing by in some other way also here you have to take the string you can see and you can collect the words by using the split function so your words is a list of words present in the string now a new is a variable which is used to store the new string now for w in words rev is equal to w within square bracket colon colon minus 1 so this is a string slicing method to reverse each word so here what will happen what's the significance of this one colon colon minus 1 where the strings will be the characters will be printed um, starting from index number minus 1 onwards okay so like this you can get the reverse of a string so the string which is present in a w that will be reversed and that, that will be stored in a variable ref so like this you can just uh, reverse all the words present in the list of words now you just go on adding all those uh, words reverse words in your new string so new is equal to new plus one space plus ref that reversed word now you can just print new so you'll get this output also so these are the two ways how you can do this program now here ends the solutions of chapter 5 on that is string manipulation of class 11 here we have discussed all the type c questions of uh, string manipulation and uh, i hope you are clear about this if there is any doubt you can put it in comment section and stay tuned for more solutions and do subscribe thank you